Hello and welcome to True Tech Training. Today we're going to go over a new product called the Sunset HXT2D. True Tech Tools is an instrument sales and distribution company based on the internet. You can reach us at truetechtools.com, that's T-R-U-T-E-C-H-T-O-O-L-S.com, or 888-224-3437. It's our uh, mission as a company to make measurement science work and that would be for all individuals using the products that we sell. So here's the product we'll be talking about today. It's the Sunset HXG 2D. It's an advanced combustible gas leak detector with a digital display. Just a brief uh, note as to who True Tech Tools are. We're the, one of the largest distributors of HVAC and energy auditing test equipment. We are a, a combined uh, unit of experienced professionals that help to deliver to the HVAC related trades uh, training material and education similar to the seminar that you're listening to today. We have uh, many years of the combined experience and on some of our uh, courses we do offer continuing education units uh, through BPI, the Building Performance Institute. And again our tagline is to make measurement science work and that's to make it work for you. Our agenda today, we uh, just covered the introductions, we'll be getting into a little bit of the instrument technology and talking about the instrument, instrument operation. And it's handy at this point if you wish to stop the recording and take a look. You can take the product out, put it in your hands, have the batteries installed and ready to use. That'll make this uh, recording a little bit more impactful and meaningful for you as you use the product. We'll also cover some maintenance, product maintenance tips, and then we'll have a knowledge retention quiz. Uh, you'll want to uh, pause the recording before you start the quiz so you can get ready with a pen and paper and then uh, sit down and record your answers and then the, the questions will be reviewed at the end so you get a chance to review how well you retain the knowledge of this recording. Quick overview of the product. It's, uh, it does have a digital display on it, three simple push buttons. They do have multiple functions. We'll be covering what those are. Standard kit as it comes is with a carrying pouch. It comes with batteries. C-size batteries are used for uh, operation of the product, as well as an Allen wrench, which is used to remove the screw that holds the battery cover in place, and an instruction manual. Please note the product is also available by special order calibrated on propane. Our standard stock is calibrated to methane, and we'll be covering some of the differences there in just a moment. So the standard features in the product, push button operation, it is field calibratable. Uh, there are calibration kits where you can send them into factory, factory authorized calibration centers such as True Tech Tools. There is a backlit display for use in dark areas. You just simply tap the C light, uh, the C button which has the word light printed on it. That will bring it up the backlight for about 30 seconds. There are adjustable alarms on the product, so you can set it for different thresholds for alarm. And the sensor involved is a long-life, uh, low-cost sensor, which can be used or replaced. The solid-state semiconductor sensor. Other standard features are, and the most, some of the most important ones, are the direct PPM readout between 0 and 990 parts per million. There is also the direct the direct readout of an LEL percent, and that readout goes from 0 to 100 percent LEL, LEL meaning the lower explosive limit. We'll cover what that means, the impact on that in a couple minutes here. There's a digital tick rate control which helps you to find leaks faster. And something important to keep in mind, this is not a carbon monoxide meter, nor is it a refrigerant leak detector. Uh, this is used specifically for detecting combustible or explosive gases. So some of the reasons why gas leak detection is important, it's often used in response to leak calls where someone senses if there's a, a leak by the odorants that are present in the, the leak and to make sure that the, uh, the area or the building is safe to enter by using a detector such as this. Also for verification of an area for worker safety or for occupants. Safety of uh, tanks, uh, either fuel tanks, 
combustible fuel tanks, piping, or appliances before or after servicing. Also to assure that there's no standby losses through leaky valves or controls and to verify conformance with any industry, government, corporate standards or regulations or guidelines that may impact the work that you do. Now here's an important factor to keep in mind some of the, the science behind how these products work. If you take a look at the graph on the left of the screen, you'll see that it talks about the concentration of gas, the percent concentration of gas in air, ranging from none of the target combustible gas to 100% target combustible gas. This is, uh, there are areas on the screen where there are too little, too lean for combustion, too little fuel available for the amount of air present. Then as that rises, it goes up to the lower explosive limit, which uh, will then support combustion as it moves through that red range, then moving further above the upper explosive limit and moves into a range where it's too rich for combustion, too much fuel for the amount of oxygen present. So in shorthand, LEL means lower explosive limit, and it's the same meaning as LFL, which is lower flammable limit. UEL is the ex upper explosive limit, and UFL is the upper flammable limit. So that these are generic terms that are used to describe combustible gases and the limits uh, for explosive concentrations. Above this UEL, the fuel is too rich to burn. burn. Within the explosives and flammable ranges, it could burn or explode if an exist ignition source is present or introduced. And below this range, it's too lean. There's not enough fuel available for the oxygen available to burn. So basically, the UEL is equal to the UF to LFL. Excuse me, UEL is equal to UFL, and LEL is equal to LFL. And there's a large uh, note here at the bottom of the page. Please make sure that you move with caution when moving from above the up for explosive limit down through explosive concentrations, which may came, come at times if you're airing out, moving from higher than uh, the explosive limit range, it will come back down through the range which will support combustion. In that situation, you are moving through a dangerous range in that red zone that's on the left. So measuring gas concentrations, we have a, an illustration here of a propane molecule, three carbons and eight hydrogen atoms. But uh, the thing to focus on here is the two typical units of measure, and these are the units of measurement that the uh, instrument uh, reads out in, parts per million or percent LEL percent or percent UEL. The thing to notice here is that 10,000 parts per million equals 1% by volume. So it's, uh, there is a relationship between its volume concentration, PPM, and percent by volume gas as a volume concentration. And just to give a little bit of uh, insight into how big a part per million is, it's one part in one million parts. Or consider that of a dropper of oil dropped into a 5,000 gallon pool. Uh, that would be equivalent to one part per million. So when you're seeing the readout on the screen, it's measuring in very fine resolution. And usually the PPM is used for the leak detection mode. Uh, that's the lower concentrations where you're looking for smaller concentrations for, of gas leak. And here's a scale on the left in the yellow box that shows moving from 10,000, which is 1% concentration, to 1,000 parts per million, 0.1%, and so on down the scale to give you an idea of the impact relationship between parts per million and percent. We'll talk a little bit about sensor technology now. There's a heater coil, which is inside the sensing element, that raises the solid state sensor which is a semiconductor sensor, to a high enough temperature to operate in order to perform its function to sense or detect the concentration of gas. There's a microprocessor in the, in the instrument which translates the change in resistance on that sensor surface into a digital display of values. So it's all programmed as to how the specially coded sensor reacts to the, uh, to the gas it's being exposed to. It will change its resistance and all this happens inside the sensor element itself. 
take a look at the limits of flammability, uh, just to give you an idea how the LEL relates to the to the actual gas concentration. So the lower explosive limit is 2.15 percent, approximately 2.15 percent for propane, and that's according to the NFPA 58 LP gas code. The upper explosive limit, above which it's uh, it's difficult or impossible to uh, support combustion due to the normal atmospheric uh, oxygen concentration, would be 9.6 percent. For natural gas or methane, it's 5 percent gas is the lower explosive or lower flammable limit, and 15 percent is the upper explosive limit or upper flammable limit. One important thing to keep in mind to note here, the explosive ranges can be affected in places where there's higher than atmospheric oxygen present or higher than 20.9. So all these concentrations are, are good or valid when you have normal atmospheric oxygen present. If you're working in an industrial process or facility where uh, enriched concentrations of oxygen were present, that would change these flammability levels. Now we'll take a moment to go over how the instrument actually functions when it crosses over between parts per million display and percent LEL on display. You see on the left hand side there's a chart of parts per million going up from 10 to 990. And the normal setting, the factory uh, setting for the instrument, is for it to display between 10 and 990 parts per million. And just a simple uh, correlation or calculation between PPM and percent gas as we saw in some previous slides. This would show you what the percent gas would be, the percent gas readout for an equivalent amount of parts per million of gas. Right now we're talking, not talking about any specific gas, but this is just strictly a volume concentration, just a concentration reading. Now if we take a look, for instance, at propane first, you can see as you move down into the, the pink boxes on the right-hand side, you get to about 10% of the LEL uh, at 2,150 parts per million, or 0.215 percent gas. That would be 10 percent of the LEL. 100 percent of the lower explosive limit, remember back to a couple slides, propane has got a lower explosive limit of 2.15 percent gas, or 21,500 parts per million. That's 100 percent of the, of the lower explosive limit. The display then switches over when it, when it moves from parts per million, it switches over to show the percent LEL on the right-hand side. So it would switch over and show about 4.6 percent. 4.6 percent being the crossover point where it starts displaying in percent LEL of propane. And that would go up until it reached 100 percent of LEL. Now taking a look at the percent methane or the methane column, you can see that the methane moves up from uh, up at 5% uh, methane is the concentration or 50,000 5% 5, 5 gas or 50,000 parts per million would be the concentration which you hit 100% so 5,000 or 0.5 percent gas is the half percent, or the 10, the uh, excuse me, the 10 percent methane, 10 percent LEL level, which is where the display would come on. The pink area is this display shows uh, for either methane or propane shows where the display alarm LED would come on on the front face of the analyzer, telling you are in an alarm mode as you move through 10 percent of the LEL level. So the crossover point is from 990 that goes over to about 2% methane and then up. Now here's a quick summary to show you all the key points here. The red zones, the red boxes are the factory alarm settings. The yellow zones are the areas in which you would see the uh, factory setting for the display. The display first in parts per million on the left, then moving into the percent LEL on the right. 
and here we'll go into again to show you the crossover point between 990 with methane it crosses over to about 2% methane is the percent LEL on display and for propane it would be about 4.6% LEL then moving up to the 10% LEL level which for propane would be 2150 ppm it would display 10% and then the alarm would come on then at 100% for propane be around 21,000 parts per million showing 100% on the display or for natural gas around 50,000 parts per million would be 100% the 100% level again is that minimum level at which there's sufficient amount of gas uh, combustible gas and oxygen present to support or sustain combustion a couple things about methane uh, it really is not a blanketing gas uh, this uh, it is lighter than air, so there really isn't a blanketing effect. There's no blanketing present. It is a colorless and odorless gas, and recaptains or sulfides or certain chemicals are added for detection by smell with the nose. Propane is a blanketing gas. That is, it is about uh, one and a half times heavier than air at uh, normal room temperatures. It's colorless and odorless, and recaptains or sulfides are added for detection by smell with propane. One of the key features of the product is it's designed for intrinsically safe operation. So we'll get into a little bit about what that means for you. The definition from the standards for intrinsic safety, uh, intrinsically safe product, is one which cannot release enough electrical or thermal energy under normal or abnormal conditions to cause a, an ignition of a, of a specific atmosphere uh, in its most easily ignited concentration. That would be like at the... Uh, 100% uh, LEL level. So this is achieved by limiting the amount of power that's available inside the equipment which is involved in that hazardous area to a level below that amount of energy which would ignite the gases. So intrinsic means basically by design which means the product must be used as designed to maintain that intrinsic safety rating. So that means there's a user element, a user involvement involved here. So necessary for a fire explosion are three things, sometimes called the combustion triangle, fuel, oxygen, and a source of ignition, which will result in combustion. Any one of those, uh, the, the oxygen in this case is assumed to be normal atmosphere concentrations of oxygen. The fuel is that uh, concentration of gas, which you are measuring with the meter. And the source of ignition would be anything in the environment or perhaps the uh, source of ignition, any, anything within the instrument itself, which is kept below the energy levels to cause ignition in even its most easily ignited situation. So for a fire or explosion to happen, to have combustion, you must have these three things present, fuel, oxygen, and source of ignition, in the right quantities, the right amounts, at the, right, at the same place at the same time. So an intrinsically safe product would assume that there are dangerous amounts of fuel and oxygen, that the concentrations are above the lower explosive limit, and then limit the electrical or thermal energy that's produced by the product from its sensors, from its electronics, so there can never be enough to cause ignition. And they go through uh, rigorous design uh, proofs, as well as uh, testing by independent laboratories to assure that the products do meet those levels. So moving into what does the product actually do, it's got basically two modes. There's a gas leak detection mode for investigation, and then a, an alarm mode, which would uh, tell you that you're above concentrations that are approaching the lower, approaching the explosive limit, and that would be used as a warning or signal for evacuation or further investigation. And always be sure to follow your company procedures, since we do talk to a broad audience here at True Tech Tools. You may have different procedures or different policies involved with your company. And it's best to study up and understand what you need to do for your own particular circumstances. So getting ready uh, to use the product here, uh, one important factor is uh, we talked about intrinsic safety. Uh, intrinsic safety means that the product is to, be that is to be used as design, and that means such things, such design elements are changing the batteries only in a place which is known to be a non-flammable or non-explosive uh, atmosphere. So that's one factor that's under your control. So the battery installation, there is a torque screw, as uh, shown by the red arrow on the right. Um, a, a torque screwdriver, uh, a torque uh, Allen wrench does come with the product. 
Uh, basically, that's meant to keep that battery handle in place to preserve the intrinsic safety of the product. It is a serious matter. It latches in place. It's a tight latch, and it's screwed down. Uh, that's only to be removed when you're in a known a an area known to be non-flammable or non-hazardous in order to uh, preserve the intrinsic safety of the product. Also, depress, depress the retaining tab with a coin or a flat object, which would then allow you to slide the sleeve away from the top or display area of the instrument down to the bottom, which would expose, expose the battery channel. And be sure to observe the battery polarity when you're installing the batteries. Uh, there's a shot here on the right-hand side of the screen with an arrow showing you how the batteries stack up, stack up from negative to positive, positive towards the bottom of the handle. So the basic operation here, hopefully you have your product uh, in hand with the batteries in place. If not, pause the video, uh, get it ready, and then come back and restart. So you want to power on, press and hold the power button until the unit powers up and release it. The unit will then complete a warm-up sequence. Uh, this should be done in an uncontaminated environment because that allows it to establish baseline or reference values. This could take up to about three minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, but it's most usually completed within 60 seconds. To power it up, press and hold the power button again for about five seconds. The unit will display the message power off, then you're ready to let go of that button. So it's a very deliberate function that you use to power it off. An important note is the unit does not auto power off, and that's because it is used uh, for detection of hazardous concentrations. Uh, it will not auto power off. There's no timer to set anything like that. You must power the unit off to, to uh, make sure that the operator is under control of the unit. LEDs that display in the front panel. There's a green LED in the left side, which indicates the instrument's functioning and ready for use. Uh, if you do happen to have uh, purchased a rechargeable model, it will indicate it's in the charging mode. That is a special model that's uh, set up to use rechargeable batteries. Battery placement is necessary. When it becomes necessary, the battery icon, which is the on the upper left corner of the LCD display, will illuminate and the green LED will flash. You have about 15 minutes of battery life uh, left uh, when that uh, battery indicator comes on. A red LED on the right-hand side would indicate that the preset alarm point's been exceeded. Uh, the factory alarm point is 10% LEL uh, for the for the HXG2D. So the instrument, as we talked about, goes through anywhere from about a minute to three or more minutes uh, warm-up sequence. And here's what's going on behind the scenes of the instrument, just to give you an idea of the complexity that's involved. Uh, but relative simplicity for use, but there's a lot of uh, intelligence built into the product. First, it'll start and display all the segments. If you take a quick look at that, make sure no segments are knocked out, because that's your, that's your readback. That's what the instrument's telling you. It turns on and off the backlight to make sure that's functioning properly. The model number will be displayed, the Sensit 2D. Then the software version will be displayed. Sometimes that can be helpful if, if going down the road as you have the, the product to make sure you're keeping up to date with software revisions. It will then display CH4, which is the chemical compound for methane, or PRO, indicating propane, as the primary gas concentration. Uh, recalling back to the slides for the crossover point, uh, the, the major um, crossover points are uh, at uh, 990 parts per million where it crosses over to then begin reading in uh, percent LEL and it would affect the percent LEL reading if it told you what, whether it was calibrated on methane or propane. It will then display 50% or 10% indicating the two choices for the lower explosive limit calibration point. Uh, the factory units come at 10% LEL setting as the point at which the alarm will come on. It will, the display will show, um, indicate the resolution of PPM or LEL or both under the DIS uh, function. Uh, the factory uh, setting is to display PPM up to 990 and then switch over to LEL. It can also be set to display percent LEL, just uh, strictly LEL. The display will then show AL followed by the alarm set point. And then the alarm will activate and sound, and the red LED will go off, and the alarm will sound for three beeps just to let you know that the alarm circuit's functioning. It will then continue to flash all the segments until the proper warm-up is attained, and that's no more than five minutes. 
it will then show you zero, ZRO indicating it's zeroing fresh air, and then once it's completed its zeroing function, the working display is shown. Uh, most usually the PPM setting, the factory setting will be showing uh, zero PPM, and it's ready to be used. If the word uh, fail ever comes up on the display, make sure the instrument's in clean air, that's uh, air free of any combustible gases, then push and hold the, Z the zero key, the C key, until auto zero is displayed. And if that uh, auto zero sequence does not clear the fail on display, that could indicate a problem with the instrument or sensor, and you should contact the manufacturer at that point. Or contact us at True Tech Tools, and we'll help you out. For ambient air testing, of course, power up. Then uh, make sure it's gone through the uh, zeroing sequence and it's set to use. Then enter the area to be tested while you're watching the display to make sure that, you, that you're seeing the display values in either parts per million or LEL. Levels of uh, parts per million indicate small amounts of leakage, but you do want to be cautious. Levels in percent LEL are large amounts of leakage. Uh, that's getting into dangerous levels. And be ready to evacuate if it's approaching the lower explosive limit, or a large fraction of the lower explosive limit. Again, always follow company procedures uh, for the norms of the, the business or the field you're working in. If uh, gas is detected, uh, the odorants in the gas are detected, you can test by using the, uh, the tick method, uh, the tick, tick, tick on the, the unit, uh, the audible uh, sound source will go off uh, in, in an increasing rate proportional to the amount of concentration in, in the parts per million that's present in the ga of uh, combustible gas. You can press the B button to begin to hear the tick rate and again that rate will increase and as you move closer to the source the concentration should increase and the tick rate will increase as that concentration increases. If it gets so high, the tick rate gets to such a high point that it's nearly continuous. You can press the tick button again, and that resets the tick rate calibration point to get a new starting point, and then that can be used for obtaining a new level so you can then sense for higher concentrations and, and find that uh, source of the leak. And the tick can also be just uh, shut off or muted by pressing the A button that has the word mute on it. One uh, technique issue is scanning rate. The sensor does need a little bit of time to react. So you should move the probe head about one inch per second. And a hint here is count to 10 as you move about one foot. And that should be about enough time for the sensor to react to any concentrations of gas that are present. So you can either see them in uh, percent LEL or see them in parts per million. Pipe dope and leak detection fluids do contain some substances which are sensed by the uh, combustible sensor. You can use the tick rate or cal button at that point to reset to a new starting point. If you have any vapors from pipe dope or leak detection fluid uh, that you want to set that as a new background or threshold level. Or you can just use the instrument prior to using any leak detection fluids if that's possible. The instrument is cross sensitive to other combustibles which includes paints, propellants, oils, household chemicals, paint thinner, gasoline, or kerosene. And those substances should be watched out for to make sure that they're not present, uh, confusing you with uh, the fact that you might have a, a pipe or a tank leak. The sensor products are checked for cross sensitivity against other types of vapors or chemical compounds, including butane, methane, hydrogen, um, Methane and propane are the primary calibration points where the products have some of the highest sensitivity, but other uh, combustible substances will cause a reaction. Basically, this chart is, chart is to show you that the, um, there is a cross-sensitivity, but they are designed to function primarily with propane and methane, calibrated on propane and methane. Product specifications. The product is made in the USA in Valparaiso, Indiana. Um, since it uh, technologies does work uh, under the ISO guidelines for manufacturing operations. And the most important note here about the product specifications is to, to remember the alkaline batteries, which preserve its intrinsic safety rating, will give you about 50 hours of continuous use. 
and you do have the low battery display to tell you when you are running low on battery. The instrument is designed to meet European standards for conformance for explosive proof as well as uh, the United States uh, standards of uh, for explosion proof under UL 913. We'll go into a little bit here what these uh, what the standard means for the product you have. Class 1 is a location where flammable, flammable gases may be present in sufficient quantities that could produce explosive or flammable mixtures. Uh, Division 1 is where these gases are present under normal conditions. In Group C are atmospheres containing certain chemicals, ethyl and ether vapors, as well as Group D, which includes the propane and natural gas, which are the, usually the, the prime targets for um, of uh, measurement for uh, true tech customers. And the, the T3 indicates the temperature class rating. So there is a lot of, uh, again, rigorous design and testing that goes into the product. From a service and maintenance aspect, the product should be stored in a warm area, if at all possible, taken from the service vehicle overnight. Uh, there will be no damage to the product, but it just uh, it, uh, infringes on the batteries and could cause the display to be a little sluggish at first as it warms up. You do also want to wrap the gooseneck in a counterclockwise circle around the back of the instrument, as shown in the, this image here. That's the best way to uh, reduce any kind of premature wear and tear over the product life. That's the way it's meant to be wrapped. Uh, to the to the left uh, counterclockwise and around the back and clipped in place. And to main, inter, maintain the intrinsic safety rating, again, it has to be serviced by factory authorized technicians with approved parts. Also, if the instrument is suspect, uh, any time operation is suspect, doesn't seem to be working right, reads an OL for overload condition or has been exposed to silicon, waxes, etc., should be checked for calibration. It's also a simple response test, which can be used with an unlit cigarette lighter. Uh, the butane from the cigarette lighter, again, we talked about cross sensitivity, will cause the, the meter to read. This is not a calibration, but simply a function test to see that the instrument is responding to a combustible gas. The sensor itself can be replaced, and the filter, the sensor filter element, can be replaced or cleaned. The sensor cap is removed by pressing the retaining tab, located shown here by the red arrow, on the side of the sensor and pulling the cap away from the base, similar to the way the battery door comes off. The filter will then be loose inside the filter element. This filter shown here, uh, looking through the top of the, uh, to the, top of the, uh, the sensor cap, is the white element. The filter can then be cleaned with a mild soap and water and then thoroughly allowed to dry. It's basically meant to keep crud from getting into the sensor itself. The filter cap can be then, re filter can be replaced in on top of, inside the cap, and then the base snapped on to the, the cap snapped onto the base until the retaining tab engages, and then you're back in business. Again, we mentioned field calibration kits are available, factory cal and true tech cal is available. Um, and to use a uh, user sensor replacement is also possible. Call us if you need any details there. There's also an accessory which is, allows you to attach a broom handle or painter's pole to the base of the accessory and then screw it onto the base of the uh, battery sleeve uh, held in place by a locking nut. This would be used for test, testing any high overhead areas, etc., cetera, uh, overhead uh, lines, fuel lines, or areas you wanted to get to which were out of reach without having to use a ladder. Okay, we're ready for the knowledge retention quiz. At this point, you should, it's 11 questions. At this point, you should stop the playback. Make sure you have a pen and paper ready. And number, that would be from 1 to 11, not from 1 to 10. Uh, there is a typo there. And pause the playback as necessary as you go through the quiz. And we'll give about uh, 30 seconds to read each uh, quiz page if you need longer. Uh, you can go forward or backwards and, and press the press the button there. At the end, we will then review the quiz and give you a uh, an overview of the, the answers for each of the questions. So here we're going to begin the quiz.
you need to pause in order to f finish the quiz, you should pause now. Otherwise, we'll advance the slide. Slide will now advance. If you need to pause it to continue reading the screen, you should pause the screen right now. The screen will now advance to the answers, so if you haven't completed the test yet and you wish not to see the answers at this point, you should hit the pause button. The screen will now advance. Here are the answers to the knowledge retention quiz. I'll read through the answers. The sense that HXG is designed to detect and measure propane, natural gas, and carbon monoxide, and the answer to that is false. It does not have the capability to measure uh, carbon monoxide. Question two, circle all the conditions where the danger of explosion or flammability is not usually present. And that would be above the upper explosive limit. That's due to the fact that there's too much fuel for the amount of oxygen present in normal atmospheres or below the lower flammability limit or the lower explosive limit where there's not enough fuel present for the amount of oxygen. What is the LEL, or lower flammability, or lower explosive limit for propane? That would be about 2.5% gas. What are the things necessary, all the things necessary for a fire explosion? Question four, oxygen, the source of ignition and fuel. Question five, is it true for the HXG2D to activate an alarm and LED upon power-up? And the answer is true. It goes to the auto power-up sequence to show you that all the key functions are working on the product. Number six, can the unit be reset to a new, how is the unit reset to a new tick rate starting point? That's again to zero out the, to re-level the concentrations in case you're approaching a higher concentration for leak rate testing to give it a new background set point. And that would be by pressing the B or the Cal button. Question seven, what is a PPM? It's a part per million unit of measurement. Question eight, what's a good scanning rate to test an area for gas leakage? That'd be about one inch per second scanning, or count to the count of ten while moving about a foot. What should you do if a tick rate gets too fast to pinpoint a leak? The instrument should be recaled in the contaminated environment. Question ten: When you auto zero, it's important to be sure the instrument's in clean air. Question eleven: What is the lower explosive or lower flammability limit for methane? and that would be 5% gas. That would complete the knowledge retention quiz answers. I want to thank you for watching this presentation by True Tech Tools. Again, we want to make sure our products are used uh, and, and fit the purpose and are used well by well-trained technicians who are using them. Uh, there are resources available. Sensit website at this address shown on the screen it has the manual quick start guide and brochure for the product. You can also find a lot of information, technical information, training, and background on Drew Tech Tools website. Or just give us a call at 888-224-3437 or drop us an email at info at truetechtools.com. Thank you for your time, for watching this presentation. Uh, please give us any feedback either via YouTube, drop us an email, give us a call. We love hearing back from our customers and students. Have a great day.